the uh, process that a master pattern maker would go through would be one where they drape the form and then they, uh, through a succession of iterations, optimize the fit of that pattern. So they create an initial flat pattern, then they go through a process of either tucking in pieces or eliminating some material or they uh, go through a process of adding material where necessary. So they may do this say 20, 30, maybe 40 times depending on the complexity of, of what's happening. This simulation for this particular piece has probably gone through about 1,500 iterations and because we stopped the simulation a little bit early, <laughs> uh, there's probably a, a, another um, you know, couple of hundred iterations to go there. So it is very much analogous. We built it in the way to think like the human would think and it searches for things that the human would search for. That's why you can have confidence uh, in the fit. And it's not just confidence from a theoretical standpoint. You'll see that um, um, the products actually do fit uh, as well, or in some cases better than what the master pattern maker would, um, would, would come up with. Yep. Now, somebody did ask a question about yep. does it take into account the width of scene. We're going to get to that right now. Oh, great. I was just going to bring that up. Good. Okay, so um, we're going to go to our second uh, part of the process now, which is uh, putting in pattern features or seam allowances uh, and notches and things like that. So you can see what we do here is we just select the edge. And when we select the edge, what we call the primary edge, the secondary edge will automatically be found and associated. And you can see there's a direction to this. The direction which we are, in which we are selecting the edges is analogous to the direction which these pieces are going to be sewn together. And for this, we have a lot of choices. So we give you, the user, the designer, the flexibility to put that, um, to select the edges in a way that makes sense for the downstream manufacturing. And that will have some uh, significant implications later on um, when it comes time to costing, which we won't cover today, but if anyone wants to know more about that, we can certainly do that. So what we've done is we've selected a number of edges here. And you can see at the top, uh, in our property managers, we've got uh, a number of edge names here, edge 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. And we've also selected what we call auto add mate. So if you didn't want to have the mate automatically selected, if you wanted to have a different seam allowance on one piece versus another piece, uh, for a variety of reasons, you're able to do that. But we've selected the edges. Now we're just going to go put a seam allowance on. We'll show you how easy that is to do. We just collect, we select seam type. And here we're going to put an 8 millimeter join. And uh, you can see that automatically all the edges are updated. Now we're going to go put some notch, some alignment notches for sewing in here. And we have a tool called the notch chain. So let's put a, a V notch in here. And there you have some alignment notches. And let's put, let's increase the count there. There we go. Yeah, let's put one more in there. And let's put another one in there as well. Okay, so you can see that it's very easy to select a number of notches. Um, uh, any number that makes sense, and uh, and um, uh, those notches will be perfectly aligned. So what you will not have to do is walk these patterns. Recall during our flattening process, we were making these edge references. These edge references now allow us to create these alignment notches at a push of a button, and we can do it in a very intuitive way. 